you chose this exact same spot because it's so significant to you and your political career. Just tell us more about where it all started for you. I chose this spot because on the 16th of June 1976, I was a first year student at Wits University studying political science. And at lunchtime on the 16th, we heard over the student radio that students in Soweto had been protesting over Afrikaans medium of instruction and the two students had been killed by the police. And after lunch, uh, we had a political science tutorial in the afternoon. And when we got to the lecture theater, our lecturer said to us, today, uh, we are not having a tutorial. We're all going out onto Jan Smuts Avenue. Two students were killed in Soweto this morning, and we're going to protest against police brutality. And we came out here in those days, uh, None of the structure actually existed. It was uh, just flat from the gardens onto Jan Smuts, and we lined up uh, opposite this building here with our placards. And it didn't take too long before the security police ar arrived. And over the next few days, we attempted on about three occasions to march from Bramfontein. We, we took a decision that we were going to meet up with the students in Soweto who were m marching into town. Of course, we never made it that far. Um, but that was my, my first experience of student activism. And uh, in many ways, those three days have shaped my life. Being in the, you know, associated with the ANC, working on underground, was it, was it difficult for you, um, you know, was there where you know you lost friends because you did what was right and you knew what was right? I was a. It wasn't a popular move, right, at that time? Yeah, but I was a. <laughs> I was very fixed in my views, and um, I suppose my attitude was: if you don't understand this, I'm not interested in being friends with you. Um, but obviously, I had a whole lot of new friends and comrades that I made from the time when, when I came to Wits. Take us through your background. Where did your love for politics start? Look, both my parents were very politically aware people. Um, my father had been a, an activist in his own right. He grew up in the United Kingdom. Um, he was a, a follower, uh, he was a member of the Communist Party, he was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi, quite a contradiction. He spent three years in prison during the Second World War because he refused to fight. Um, my mother's parents had been trade unionists, so it was a very political family that I grew up in. Um, every mealtime would end up with books and encyclopedias all over the table, there would, there would be a debate. Um, my father died when I was eight years old. My mother brought myself and my brother up and um, my mother was very articulate about the fact that apartheid was wrong, that what was happening to black people in this country was wrong. So I suppose one, one got those views at a very early age. I can remember very clearly pass raids taking place in the streets. I can remember seeing men and women herded into the back of police vans for nothing else other than not having the right stamp in a pass book. And I can remember at that very, very young age being very outraged by that. Um, so I suppose by the time I came here, I had decided to study political science and I was looking for this kind of activism. Tell me about, you know, being a little girl. Were you shy? You know, what kind of a person were you growing up? Um, obviously, I was much affected by my father's death as a child, and I think it, uh, it had a big impact on my self-confidence. Um, you know, in those days, schools were not exactly diverse. Um, I was very aware of the fact that I was the only child in the whole school who didn't have two parents. Um, you know, and I compare that with when my own children were at school, where 
uh, I once asked them, um, is it a problem that your parents are divorced? They said, why is it a problem? Everybody's divorced. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it, uh, that, that definitely shook my confidence. Um, I suppose the way I dealt with it was that I applied myself to my academic studies. Um, I always did well at school. Tell me how it must have been difficult being raised by a single parent, right? Your mum. What role did she play in your upbringing? My mother was, um, she was very strict. Um, she had very set views about how people should behave. She had very, um, she, was, she was a very demanding parent. Uh, if you didn't do well at school, and you, you would come home with your report. She would look at the report and she'd say, but uh, I, I, maths was never my good subject. And she would say to me, um, I don't like this mark. And I'd say, well, I did my best. And she'd say, well, that's not good enough. Do someone else's best. Um, and so she was, she was a very demanding parent. But I think that uh, the other thing, apart from my political views, the other thing that I got from my mother was a very strong sense that women can do anything. Um, she, she really uh, conveyed that both in the way that she lived and worked and, and also in the values that she translated. And um, she always said there's nothing that women can't do. Of course, um, the world was very conservative in those days. Uh, most, most of my friends' mothers didn't work. Um, uh, my mother was, was one of the few that worked. Um, <clears throat> and I, we used to spend school holidays at her work uh, because uh, that was where we needed to be. So um, she, she definitely uh, brought me up with a very strong sense of independence and a very strong sense that one can be anything that one wants to be. How difficult is it to be um, a politician, being a female politician, you know, in this in this environment? Uh, you know, when I was growing up, the best you could hope for as a woman was to be the second in command. You you could never hope that you would lead in your own right. So I think that one does have to, and and perhaps it's hard today for people to understand that um, in the first democratic cabinet there were only two women uh, and today half the ministers are female so you know I think I think we've come a very long way and and one has to pay tribute to the ANC for that I think the most difficult thing for women generally is balancing the role as a mother with uh, one's career because the fact that you have a career doesn't mean you don't have to do all the things that women who don't work have to do. You have to do both. And so uh, I think that, that the, the double shift is an enormous burden on women. And um, you know, I think once upon a time it was considered sort of uh, clever, sexy, to be balancing the two. I think now what's recognized is it's, it's hard work, it's exhausting, and uh, it really is a tremendous drain on women. But I think that um, many women have to do that, and uh, I think it's a, it's a heavy price to pay.